This is the President McCormack Podcast with your host, Mark McCormack. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Luke Jordan, one of my best friends. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been chatting for a minute, obviously, before we started the podcast. So first thing I want you to do is tell the story of how we met. Okay, so how we met is through my son, kind of a funny story. My son wanted to make some extra money at 12 years old. And he said he'd weed uh, people's grass, their lawns for extra cash. And so uh, we put it on Facebook and Mark right away to help the neighborhood out like he always does says, Hey, come weed my, come weed the weeds out of my lawn. Even though there's not that many. So my son goes over there and starts weeding and, and Mark's asking him all the, all the questions that he likes to know everybody. And, and my son's answering him and my son puts in there that his dad does heating and air conditioning. So right away they go downstairs and my son sells them an air conditioner. So <laughs> I should have gave him a commission for that. So Mark of course buys whatever, cause it's from the neighborhood and he's a good guy. And I go over there and that's how I met you. Yeah. So I blame my son for us being friends for three years and going to Powell and everything else we do. And oh, yeah, man. pretty cool. It's kind of a funny story what we met through my son. No, it's hilarious. I mean, it's, it's one of those like moments where I don't know. I've been, I was thinking, so I have, you know, three levels in my house where I have an AC unit on every one. Right. But yeah. I only had two. Cause you know, no one likes to put them in the basement. And I just was thinking for months and months and months, man, like I gotta get a freaking AC in here. Cause in the winter you don't need one. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when I was talking to little Luke, right. He was just like, yeah, my dad does this. So I was like, dude, get him over here, man. I need yeah. an AC right now. You know? And then, yeah, yeah, it was like, I don't even know we talked more than two minutes about it. You were kind of, you were really sales pitching me. I mean, a little bit, you kind of just answered my questions. I was like, yeah, when can you do it? And you're like tomorrow. And I was like, do it. Yeah, it was, really? easy, it was the easiest deal of my life. I'm yeah. like, dude, I'll have my son sell more stuff to the neighbors. Yeah. This, is a, this is a good business plan. Stop weeding and start selling HVAC. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. No, Plus but that, he's but that's amazing, what I knew. amazingly hard worker. Oh Look. yeah, he, okay. Yeah. It's good to hear. Oh, well, I know, I know it comes from the top down in your family for sure, because you're one of the hardest workers I know, but like. Yeah, we try. I mean, having him, it was funny, right? When he brought Wyatt over, right? Oh yeah, yeah when he's making over, the seven year old yeah, help him. Like, my son, my son Nixon's older than Wyatt, and I'm just like, I'm a terrible dad. Why do I have my son out there weeding? Yeah, we start him young, so, man. We yeah. want him, we teach work work ethic young at our house, but you know, for better or for worse, that's the way I think it should be done. But yeah, oh, I, I love too. that you hire him and yeah. let him do that. So I appreciate that. Yeah. So cool. I'll hire him for anything, man. He takes care of my driveway in the winter. You know, oh yeah, he did that. He did a good job on that. <laughs> <laughs> whenever Michelle says it's my turn, I'm just like, hey, dude, what's Luke yeah. up to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. He but, loves doing it, and he yeah. likes you. Yeah, so. no, he's a way good dude. Yeah, and then Brea and Jessica are friends now, so yeah. that's cool. Yeah. So Brea, if you're listening, Jessica says hi. Yeah. In ten years, when you listen to your dad's podcast, <laughs> when you actually I care, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for him to hear all this stuff, but I'm also kind of like, I wonder how much content they're really gonna. Listen yeah. To. So you got to throw their, you got to name drop them once in a yeah, while. Yeah. It's funny that our daughters are friends and we're friends and yeah. And you've already had Dan on and yeah. I know it's kind of yeah. cool. Try to get Max on. I think Max will eventually come on. Max so. better come on. He'd his wisdom. Yeah, no, he gets his. nervous. Like he doesn't have enough to say, man. I'm like, dude, I just, this is for my friends, bro. Like dude, if people I knew, listen to it great. If they don't, whatever. If I knew half of what Max, I wouldn't be worried, dude. Yeah. That guy's kind of, kind of a genius. Yeah. Yeah. With real estate. So, so super fun thing. So we live in the same neighborhood on Bluffdale. I mean, what an amazing neighborhood really. Right. Cool. I, two, two weeks ago I coined the term and I don't know, maybe someone else already said this, but I call it the Bluffdale bubble. Oh, like nice. we kind of live in a bubble out there in our, in our neighborhood, in our neighborhood. Yeah. I go yeah. to Murray, I own some condos in Murray and uh, we rebuilt it. Nice. Like it's immaculate. You, yeah. you, I mean, you could live there. It's finished so nicely, yeah. but you walk outside the door of that condo and there's tweakers walking down the road and there's just, yeah. it's just not the same. You don't see that in Bluffdale. And I was yeah. telling my kids, we kind of live in a, in a bubble where the neighbors are nice and you're not yeah. worried about, you know, crime and all that. So it's kind of cool. Oh, I love where we live. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're super lucky. We have, I mean, we live in a nice neighborhood. There's very nice homes in there, dude. Very nice yards. I mean, literally everyone got waterfalls in there, right? Yeah. Bolden Falls. Yeah, I got, I got pools on like three, four sides of me. Yeah. Yeah, every angle, like there's a, someone's got a pool. And I know we're both the ones that don't have a pool because all of our neighbors have them. Yeah, he's right. We don't need yeah, it. Yeah. I know when Dan put his in, Dan Hartle, 
um you know i mean you know dan's just like dude whenever you want here's the code to the thing yeah. just show up whenever you want and i'm kind of like well you know my mom would smack mm-hmm. the shit out of me if i just showed up at someone's house yeah, yeah tell you them can't I'm do coming, that. So I don't, she's still alive so i can't handle that but yeah it's like yeah i mean he, he means it too yeah. you know if i went over there at two o'clock in the morning and want to go for a swim he would just he dude, he's, he's the most generous guy yeah. in the world yeah. anything i've ever asked him for he'll just he'll just give me dude all of us you are know? that way though right yeah it's kind of cool i mean i I, I, would, I know if I need you, you free, I just got to text you. You know what I mean? Hey, look, yeah. I need something. You know, yeah, same I'll thing with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except for manual cool. labor, I don't really do that as much. But. Yeah, <laughs> we don't call you for that. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we call you for a good time, man. Yeah, That's, what we do. Good time <laughs> That's the only reason I'm here on this podcast. I'm like the most shy guy I know. Dude. Here I am freaking <laughs> recording something. No, I, just because you asked. I love it. No, I love that you're on the podcast, man. I mean, when I, when I started writing my guest list, um, I, my guest list was about 105 people when I first wrote it up and I just literally went through my phone and I was like, Hey, these are the people I know for a fact I can just call and will come on it and not even question me. Right. Yeah. I think you're in the top 15. Oh, wow. Thank you. you. Know? And your name's Jordan. So you're in the middle of my phone. So you're one of the guys yeah. that I thought, boom, these guys are coming on my podcast cause they're freaking awesome. And so, Thanks, man. and you know, all the stuff you've been up to dude. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we're going to get into all of it. Maybe I don't know if we can fit all of it into this, this episode, but well, you're, you're doing some cool you stuff, dude. Some Thanks, really cool man. stuff. Well, let's do this. Let's, Let's jump right in. So um, let's talk about Mexico, right? Okay. You own a pecan farm in Mexico. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm Why? a far- I'm a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, a HVAC guy and a plumber that turned farmer. Yeah. So I have uh, I have some rental properties and I have some commercial real estate, and I love that. That's a that's the nicest job you can have is yeah. commercial landlord. But but what do you do? What else do you do with the money? Um, and I thought I looked into, I looked into pecans and pretty much they say you can't grow money on trees, but these guys in Mexico are doing it. I go down to Mexico to visit in this small town in the middle of Chihuahua, Mexico in the desert. And the whole town's dirt poor, except for the people that own pecans and they're all driving Raptors. I've never seen more Ford Raptors than anywhere in, in the world. As I see over there in Chihuahua, Mexico, I said, this is strange. That's an expensive truck. You know what I mean? And so I just been, I flew out there and looked at it. And then I didn't like the first farm I looked at. It was four years ago. And I bought the farm right next to it where they had a better well. And it was, it was a legal well, it was permitted and everything. And, and dropped a half a million dollars and bought the land. So we'll do, we'll do sprinklers on it uh, end October and we'll plant trees in January. So yeah. we're already penciled in. We got the engineers to write up where every tree is going to go. And nice. So it'll be, it's kind of strange, but it's kind of cool. Well, the fun, the fun thing about that is, I mean, it's like, you're an international businessman, right? Well, I am now. Yeah, yeah I am now. I'm now, you know? So my mom was born there and so I'm working on my dual citizenship and I hired an attorney over there and I got all my stuff in the work. So yeah. I'll be dual citizenship so I can own my land there. Yeah. So that's yeah. the goal. Yeah. No, that's going to be, yeah, it's way cool. Do you still have family in that area or is that yeah. area separate? Yeah. So my my sister married a guy from over there yeah and a super cool dude my brother-in-law and he's going to run the farm and he's happy to do it because he already has the crews to do it and they got they got a certain amount of free time where he doesn't have a lot for them to do yeah. that's a perfect time to plant and harvest yeah. and then just you pay one guy to water it yeah and uh weed it you know every, they go through the tractor and weed it every month or so mow it yeah. and uh so for him to do it is not a big stretch and he makes a commission on it so it's a win it creates a win-win i'm diversified uh, labor's a lot cheaper over there yeah and they buy pecans in american dollars which i was like really like, yeah they pay in american dollars. well cool the dollars the dollar's doing good right now this is might work out so yeah and it takes know. a long time to grow the trees right yeah so we'll, about six years to produce their first nut really in about year seven it should pay for the maintenance of it that year and Every year after that, I'll make more and more money. The tree gets bigger. Yeah. But year twelve, year fifteen, I'll be netting. I'll be netting in today's money over four hundred grand a year just off that farm. Yeah. So it'll pay for itself almost every year once it's to that age. So yeah. My, my kids might enjoy that. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be around, but. Oh, you'll still be around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the time you're 60, 70, that'll be probably one of the best investments you ever made. Yeah. I mean, seriously, right? And they, they just keep growing. There's yeah. there's pecan trees that are that are documented in New Mexico. They have papers on that are over 200 years old and they don't, they don't all last that long, but as long you know, there's some, there's death rate when you plant initially, yeah. but the ones that last just last forever. What is the death rate? 
I never even thought about that. So I'm trying to remember what what my brother in law told me. I think it's like six percent or something when you plant, and you have to re, you have to kind of have to replant them the next year. But, oh, gotcha. And then and then they could do well. So what's the expected life of a tree? You got to be like at a hundred years, right? They're, they're, they just are. They just as long as you water them, they live. Go forever. Yeah, they can go forever if you give them water and nice. and nutrition. Yeah, it was just kind of cool. A lot of trees, you know, die sooner than that. So. And do you harvest? Is it once a year harvest, or do you continually harvest? So one, once a year, the nut matures, and you know, usually wait till the first frost over there. Could be you know middle October, first November, and you get a shaker and shake the tree, and your money falls off it. <laughs> so I plan on being in Mexico two weeks a year just for the harvest, collect yeah. a check, visit everybody, and yeah. have a good time. The food's good over there. It's my yeah. favorite. It is very good over there. And my mom was born in uh, Galeana, just outside of Casas, Ca Casas Grandes, they call it, Casas Grandes. That's how I say it. Yeah. <laughs> you American. Yeah, I yeah, can't say it right. <laughs> but uh, that's the city over there. And uh, and so the way she cooks is the way they cook over there. So when I go over there, I feel like I'm going home in a sense, like the food. So I love going there just to eat. I can't yeah. come back 10 pounds heavier, you know, yeah. so I can't stay there more than like two weeks. I'll get fat. But <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of feels like going home in a way, even though I'm yeah. not raised there, but yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to me. So oh, know, that's awesome. Yeah. So when you, uh, are you going to build a structure on the, on the farm or are you just going to keep it all farmland? I will. They're, they're building a golf. All these pecan owners are building a private golf course over there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking of getting a golf course home built. They're all building multi-million dollar homes in this city in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, I'm thinking about getting a, a golf course home, but later I'm gonna let my nuts pay for that. I'm yeah. not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do HVAC enough to pay for that. I'm gonna let yeah. my, when my nuts are producing, I'll, I'll, I'll probably get a lot while yeah. they're cheap when they first sell them when they're cheap, but I'll probably wait to build yeah. you know, later. You need to get a couple lots down there. Get a couple of one for you too. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna be a nice golf course oh, they're yeah. putting in. But they, I will do a farmhouse just to have someone watch my farm. But you, you don't need someone really watching your trees every day until a few years into it. Yeah. That's what they say. You know, you don't have someone living there and tell you that your nuts could get stolen or something, you know, right. Until you have some assets to protect basically. Yeah. 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 And you'll hire a local person probably, right? Mm -hmm. Local person just live in a little, you know, one bedroom, little apartment, and then they'll have a barn on it to store all the nuts. Cause that, that many trees will produce a lot of nuts once time to harvest yeah. and you're waiting to sell them. You want them in indoors. How long so, would it take to, to sell them all? Do you know from the other guys down Not there? Not long. The, buy, the buyers come in, they'll buy that whole area within two weeks. So yeah. you, you know, but you'll put your tractors in there. You got to have, you know, there's some things that you need to keep the weeds down and to keep your farm looking nice. Yeah. Some machinery and that'll be in your barn. And then, and then you store your nuts for a couple of weeks and then they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> they come in and just. Yeah. So what made cool. you decide to do it? I get bored. I guess I get bored easily. You know, I started an appliance repair and then I did HVAC. You know, 10 years into that, I started H HVAC business and uh, now I do plumbing. And then I started doing sewers, like underground excavation sewers and sewer liners. And I don't know if board's the right word, but I just, I just want to learn more. I want to do more. Yeah. And I also want to diversify, you know, what if one country's, you know, one, you know, one industry or one country could be doing better than the other, I think is a good idea to have dual citizenship since I can get it. Yeah. And, and there's certain opportunities there. If you have money, there's opportunities in a developing country that you can't get here. It's harder to find here. And also that's why my, where my connections are. My brother-in-law is there. Yeah. And you, you know, in life, it's about who, you know, you, you teach me that every day. Life <laughs> is so much about who, you yeah. know, not all, you got, you got to know a lot and you got to have skills and you got to yeah. do things. But if you know the right people, it sure helps. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. that that's where my connections are. That's where they're making their fortunes. And so I'm just like, hey, you know, yeah. why not? Yeah. At that point, why not? No, I, I mean, it's, uh, I never thought I'd want to own a farm. And the more we talked about it, especially down at Lake Powell, right? You yeah. Know, did a little couple strip earlier this year. And it, it, it's insanely fascinating. My business mind loves it, right? Because startup capital is not really crazy. You know, but like once those things start producing, I mean, it takes a minute, right? You're, you're you you got to wait eight, for nine, it. 10, 12 yeah. years, right? But then, man, once you're going, it's just like a cash freaking cow. Oh, yeah. The maintenance on it is so cheap after that. Yeah. And you still, have to, you still have to watch them and maintain them, but labor is not the same there as it is here. Yeah. You know, it's a different, it's a different animal. They so. hire a little army down there to yeah. take care of the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His payroll, his payroll every two weeks is less than one of my guys here for his whole crew of nine guys, including his foreman. 
Really? Yeah. I'm just, it blows my mind. And, they, and they're good farmers. Yeah. And Do you the, pay them in American dollars as well, or do you pay them in pesos? Uh, I think he pays his guys in pesos. Yeah. But... But when you when you contract with him though, you'll probably pay him in U.S. dollars. Yeah, yeah. I'll pay my brother-in-law in dollars, which I haven't haven't paid him yet. He's lamped the whole deal. I probably should pay him at some point. He hasn't asked for anything. <laughs> yeah, he says send you an we, invoice, right? he'll send me he'll send me an invoice once the farm's planted. Yeah. I, I assume you know yeah. he's got to get me to the finish line there. But yeah. he's a super he's a super good dude. I he's kind of a little politician down there. He knows everybody. He's yeah. so well connected over there, and and he's worth a lot of money. Like he's not. He's doing it, I think, just because he wants me to come visit him, I swear. Like yeah, he loves to play basketball with me or lift weights or just he's just interested in people. Yeah. And he loves visitors and and he wants me to kind of be a part of his community too. And oh, that's cool. It's kind of cool. How many people do you think are in that in that part of like is it a town? Is it a city? Yeah, it's a town. Yeah. Gosh, there's probably I don't know, probably five thousand people or something. Yeah, it's pretty small, right? Really small. We were talking like Idaho Farmville. Small, right? It's really, yeah, yeah, it's really, really small, man. They yeah. got two little tiny, uh, if you'd call them grocery stores. Right. They're about, you know, combined, they're a tenth of one of our Walmarts, something. You know what yeah. I mean? The place is really small. Yeah. But good people, good, good, uh, friendly people there, hardworking. Yeah. It's an interesting community. Now, the cool, here's, a, I already know this, the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask <laughs> you so you can tell the people, how do you get there? So, I fly, how do I get there? Yeah. I fly into El Paso and we drive to, we don't go through Juarez cause that place is too dangerous. We'll go to a, a different border crossing. And I always have my brother-in-law pick me up cause I don't want, cause he speaks Spanish and he picks me up, drives me back across the border. It's about two and a half to three hour drive. And uh, we get, we always get stop and get tacos as favorite taco stand. And then we, yeah. and we cruise in. So, yeah. Cause you would think, see, I think in America, especially me, when I first, envisioned what you're talking about right you would fly into the local airport and you know grab a rental car and go over to your place but it's not like that you it's not like keep that. it in america and cross the border how, yeah. how long is it down there's about four hours right the whole trip or is it not quite that long i think it's a little under four hours to get all the way to the farms all the way there yeah yeah but it, but i we always stop we always stop and get the mexican cokes and the tacos and visit and so yeah. I mean, it takes you a half day yeah. just because the food we always got to get the stop for that food man. Yeah. yeah no I, I love that you know it's also way cool it's part of your heritage you know yeah part of the world that's cool my mom's from there my mom was at my house today she comes and cleans my house once a month i swear oh, just nice. i swear just to see the grandkids yeah, yeah and i pay her to do it but she can't i was talking to her about it and and she just loves it. She's, she's like, excited. she's like, how do you, how did you do that? You know, I'm like, I don't know, mom, you're from there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll take, I'll take, she hasn't seen it yet. But I'll take her back there once we plant, once yeah. it's, once it's pretty and I'll, every, every tree will be symmetrical. They have it lined out. So if you look at it from any angle, you look at it pretty much, there'll be straight lines of trees, yeah. like diagonal to anyway, once it looks cool, I'll take my mom there and show it off. Right now it just looks like a piece of dirt. Yeah, so it's a piece of dirt. With yeah. an awesome well on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's way cool. So your day job, let's chat about that a little bit. Okay. Know your business a little bit. Tell me what you do. So I do heating and air conditioning and I do plumbing and I do, uh, I love, I love digging the dirt yeah. since I was a little kid. I thought I'd always want to drive a tractor. And so I just did it. You know, once you have enough money, you do whatever you want, right? You're the, yeah. that's what you, why you do what you do, right? <laughs> you go anywhere you want to go. Yeah. I was like, I'm just going to buy a tractor. Yeah. I went to an auction over there in, uh, North Salt Lake. And I bought a backhoe and I said, I'm yeah. just going to start digging sewers. I mean, yeah. it's just changing a pipe in the ground. I could figure that out. Yeah. Turns out there's a little more to that. And you know, you gotta be bonded and licensed and insured and all this other stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, I get to play in the dirt and yeah. it's kind of fun. And the name of the business? I repair heating and air. I repair heating and air. Yeah. Little red vans with the blue riding. I oh, see yeah. it everywhere. Yeah. We got these Mercedes vans all over now. Yeah, yeah. We did lose <laughs> a lot of money. Well, not a ton of money. We lost some money when we went to Wendover because we were betting on I repair red. Oh, I, I repair red. <laughs> <laughs> Tur turns out it doesn't work for us in Wendover, <laughs> yeah. but in Vegas, I made a lot of money on I repair red on the oh, on roulette. Yeah. yeah I couldn't yeah. lose dude. Well, who knows? <laughs> sounds like, it sounds like an average day in my business, dude. Yeah, Hit or yeah. miss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the one fun thing about Luke is, um, you know, you're, we're like, it's like our little crew in the neighborhood, right? It's like mm -hmm. me, you, Max and Dan. And it's just like, yeah, whenever it's time to have some fun, it's like a little text goes out, you know, it's like poker, Wendover, pool, you know? Yeah. Just whoever's around, let's go have some yeah. fun together. It's one of the cool, it's one of the really cool things about our neighborhood, really. Yeah. You know? 
yeah and so, we feel comfortable around each other we just yeah you know i'll tell you guys things i won't tell a lot of people yeah and it's like i don't feel like you know it's we're, you're gonna spread it all over town or be judged yeah. for it, whatever it's cool having buddies and they're all close yeah so you know i can't tell you how many times dan's like do you have this tool you know whatever like yeah <laughs> just come get it dude you got a hammer i'm like yeah i got the biggest hammer dude you're yeah. stress me i got anything big you want i got it dude oh well, that's awesome and you've actually you've done a lot of work in the neighborhood too right I've done a lot of work, man. I don't know how many systems I put in, but probably, probably close to 30 HVAC systems just in our neighborhood. Yeah. And I was like, I'm kind of blown away by that. You know, See, people just, I, people just hiring me just cause I'm their neighbor, you know? Yeah. Uh, they're hiring you because you're a good dude. Yeah. You something. Know. There's some neighbors <laughs> I would never hire and I would still say hi to them. You yeah. I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well you, uh, so one of my favorite things that I bought from you actually is my filters in my house. No, oh, the air, the air filters, man. Air filters are nice. dope. They're, tell us about those. <clears throat> Cause I can't explain them. Like so, when, so when COVID hit, I've known about air purification for a long time. Cause I've taken all the classes on it. Yeah. When you're in the heating and air business, you got to go to all these classes and learn it. But basically I put an air cleaner in, uh, that's as clean as a hospital operating room mm -hmm. and the technology exists to put that in a house. People just don't know about it. But when COVID hit, I put one little th comment out there on Facebook saying I had these things. And I went and bought the last 10 they had at the supplier. I bought everything they had, which was 10. And I sold nine of them to our neighbors. Like within two days, they were, you know, nine of them yeah. were gone. And then we sold one to, I think we sold, I think I sold one to Max later. You did sell one. It was he, the, yeah, it was the one. It, right? Yeah, it was, but I had that left over. I had sold nine just to yeah. my friends on Facebook. Well, because I got mine in January, right? Because uh -huh. I was sick of the air quality. Yeah, so you, I you're bought three of them. Yeah, you bought yeah. you bought half my inventory, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I remember, dude. I do. I've told a bazillion people about that. Yeah, you think you've, so. you're the reason Max bought his. You oh, told him about you told yeah. about that too. But they're awesome. Oh, I've got me and him were standing there like two old dads just staring at my filter, you know, in the freaking yeah. utility room. He's like, "You like this?" I'm like, "It's a must." Yeah, like, I would I would never go to another house without one of these things. I mean, the second you kicked it on, dude, it took ten minutes. You could smell a difference, huh? Oh yeah. The first thing I did when I bought my house. The very first thing I did is I had my guys, because I don't want to install them anymore. I pay these guys to do it, even in my own house. <laughs> so the first thing I did, I swear I wasn't there a week, and they had air purifiers in my house. Yeah. And what, here's, I'll tell you a story. You can judge me for this, okay? So, you know, my wife puts up with a lot, because I'm a lot to handle, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and poor Michelle, she's got to deal with you. So, oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. know. But I'm in the HVAC business, but I'm kind of new into HVAC at the time, living in Sandy. And I, would, I just went to night school and learned it when I was already running my other company. I mean, I'm yeah. running 30 employees. Yeah. I need another company like a hole in the head, but I was just bored, you know, or whatever. <laughs> just curious. I want to do something else. Yeah. So I was kind of learning about indoor air quality as I was gone. I'm like four years into the HVAC business and my wife has allergies and she loves to mow the lawn. And don't tell her any different, okay? Because <laughs> she still, to this day, mows our lawn. And, she really? and she likes it. She'll get yeah. out there in the sun and walk and mow. And I'm the happiest guy on earth, dude. Every time I see that, I'm like, yeah, you keep doing that, babe. Good yeah, job. Yeah. She loves it. And I'm not, I don't want that to change. Don't tell her there's anything wrong with that, okay? Yeah. Don't judge, don't judge me for make that. Make sure she doesn't listen to the podcast. Yeah, exactly. Just make sure she won't listen to this. <laughs> but I love her mowing the lawn. And I love that she loves it. But she's kind of, she has allergies from the pollen outside. Yeah. So when she mows the lawn the whole rest of the night, she has a stuffy nose. And it finally dawns on me in the, in a house in Sandy. I'm like, I should just put a nice system in for my wife. Like I don't need it, mm -hmm. but I, I want to try this. You know, I've learned so much about it, and, but I don't own one. And I said, at some point I got to, I, and I've sold tons of them. I've sold a hundred of them by then. Yeah. And I said, I got to put this in my own house. And, and see if it helps my wife. And it made the biggest difference in the world. So she'll come in from on the lawn and it's like, it's almost like she went to the doctor. She, she comes in within 30 minutes, there's no pollen in the air. As long as she, you know, washes her face and you know, it's gone. Yeah. There's no pollen in the air in our homes. And when I saw it make a difference with her, it obviously made me more of a believer in it. But what happened is we have, we had Luke back then, he was, he was little back then. Oh, he went down. You know those lights on there? Yeah. He flipped the switch off on it. Uh, and I'm not kidding you. My wife knew within a, like a day or two of that happening, she knew she said something's different. Yeah. You know, some like like I my I'm all stuffed up. Can you check the the air thingy? You know, she don't know what it's called. Yeah, she, yeah. Can you check the air thingy down there? And I go down there and the switch is off. I said, how'd that get turned off? She's like, well, yeah, why was in there playing? I was doing laundry. It's probably him. Yeah. Or not? She's not why it was Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Why is done everything 
That kid's a mon- <laughs> that kid's a, that kid's a man. I'm all, yeah. I'm used to saying white getting in trouble, but that was Luke back then. Yeah. And I had to flip the switch off, and and uh, when I turned it back on, she felt better. And I said, "That is the that's the best testimonial I could ever give on an air purifier." Yeah, that's real. And so yeah. it, it's made a lot of difference for a lot of people. If you suffer from allergies or asthma or anything like that, put one of these in. It's it, just, it'll know. actually pull viruses out of the air. Right. Yeah, well, it captures and kills viruses too. And, yeah. and I put that post out there when COVID hit, everyone was jumping on because of that. But we have some of the dirtiest air in the country when the inversion is on, but not in my house. First thing I did was put yeah. those in my own house because I learned my lesson from the Sandy house to this one. I'm like, okay, first thing I'm doing is putting those in. Yeah. Because once you, once you have, you don't want to live without them. It's like yeah. power windows and air conditioning in a car. Yeah. Once you have them in a car, you don't want to go back to, you know, cranking the, window down anymore yeah. okay that's a no-brainer and they're you know i mean they're not cheap for sure you know but they um but you never have to like buy filters for them you know you just pull the filters out and clean them and stick them back mm-hmm. in pull filter out vacuum it if it's real dirty you spray it out with the hose let it dry and put it back in yeah, i love and it when so, you guys come over and do it for me yeah you know yeah, <laughs> yeah that's usually me what's going on what's up dude? i know you come yeah. over all the time yeah yeah he's like come do this i'm like i'm so close i don't want to send a guy dude but she'll give me lazy. such a hard time about that she's just like <laughs> She's like, tell me how to do it. I'm like, I don't know how to do it. Like, ask Luke. No, actually, don't ask Luke because I, I like it when you guys do it because it's like perfect. Yeah, you know, well, I, well, I'll go there and do a good job. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's fun to see you anyway. It's an excuse kind of see you one more yeah, time. Exactly, and, dude. Exactly. Come yeah. over, chill. Yeah, if fun. I'm ever there. Plus, I can get all the snacks, dude. You know, you yeah, guys always like... got something good to eat, bro. It's like <laughs> I love going to your house. I'm like, I'm gonna eat something new. Yeah. I'm gonna eat something tasty. You know, <laughs> it's like look forward to that. That was very. It's like true. a side perk of knowing you, dude. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell me about, so one cool thing. Um, so when I met you, you would, you would, have you'd already sold the appliance company by then? I think so. I think you had. I, I just sold it. What yeah. was the name of that? Famous Appliance Service. Famous Appliance Service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell, tell us about how that, tell us from like the inception of doing that to when you sold it, how'd that all go down? It's kind of, it's kind of a interesting story. How far do you want me to go back? Like when I, when I had the thought that I had to be a yeah. business so owner. What'd you do to start the business? So when I was uh, when I was in college, I went to college. Believe it or not, but I went I went to college for three years and only got a two year degree. Yeah. Okay, I'm like Tommy Boy. All right, it takes me a while to learn anything. Okay, yeah. I'm a little slow. But what happened is I my little sister passed away. She had epilepsy, mm-hmm. and I found her. I was the one that found her. She was living with me at the time, and I was in college. And I was we were just our family was just dirt poor. We were poor, and I was trying to pay my way through school. And, uh, and I broke my back and I lost my football scholarship. And then I, and because of that, uh, football count as one credit hour. And I didn't, I didn't put that together that if I, and so I ended up losing my academic scholarship because football didn't count as one credit hour. And so I was a one credit hour short. So I went from having two scholarships to college to none. So three years into this, like I said, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done. I lost both my scholarships yeah. for different reasons, almost the same reason, but I just didn't know how college worked yeah. and my parents weren't around. And so I, I was paying my way through school and I couldn't afford to take, I want to take her to the best doctors or whatever, to try to fix her epilepsy. And, uh, I don't know, there's not really a cure for that. You, just, you know, they try to just treat it, but yeah. I always felt, I always wished I could have done more. And I was young, I was 20 years old, you know, she's 19. And I always wished I could have done more, or had more money. And, but, but, and I was always driven. Hard work to me is just part of my, part of life, part of who I am. I'm not scared to work hard, but I wanted to make some money. And after that, I was like, this is an absolute must. Like I, I wanna be in a position to help. If anything ever happens in my family again, I wanna have the option to be able to help, mm-hmm. you know, and to do more, to get her to the best doctors. Not that they could have cured her, but I want to at least try. I want to have the ability to try and to do more for people. And that pushed me over the edge. And, and I dropped out of college and I started Famous Appliance with my brother. Had to talk him into it. It took me a few months to convince him to do it with me because yeah. he knew how to fix the microwaves and he was way better at refrigeration. He was older and I was still, you know, I was still a baby on some of that stuff, but I was, but I was going to school for business. And I said, look, let's just make it, let's just do it. And you know, the first year we were terrible made like six thousand dollars and the next year we did a little better we made like fifty thousand and then the next the third year i think we made like a hundred thousand each or something and we just kept rolling it we kept hiring guys 
three years into it, we bought 12 trucks cash. We know what to do with the money. We're just like buying, we bought our whole fleet, all brand new Tacomas and yeah. with toppers and shells and lettering and everything on them. We're hiring and training guys and we just blew it up. And we were working from, we'd start our day at seven and we'd get home past 11 every single day, running service calls ourselves yeah. on top of running all the guys. And we just built, a, we built a really cool company. But after, you know, 17 years, I bought him out like year nine. But after 17 years of running this thing, I just like, you know, I'm just done. I just yeah. don't, I don't want to look at a washer anymore. You know, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do this crap. No, honestly, you know? a washer so, broke down the other day. And I was, and I was like, out of town. Thank goodness. No, just yeah, but I was like, I, cause I, I hit you up, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, dude, I literally thought about it for like 15 minutes. Cause I normally, I'm just like, boom, just do stuff. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, freaking Luke hates this shit. <laughs> and then I, was yeah. like, I don't care though. If he's around, I'll go, he can come over and show yeah. me how to, I'll actually fix this thing. You know, yeah. we ended up just selling it and getting a freaking new one. Actually, Michelle got it to work somehow. Who the heck knows? But see the, the thing that's amazing though, is like, I'm telling you nowadays, no one knows how to fix anything. Yeah, it's right? crazy, huh? I mean, guys like you that are just like, I'll just tear this thing apart until I figure it out. Yeah, I can literally fix pretty much anything now. Oh, yeah. Like electrical, yeah. mechanical, whatever. Yeah. But I don't tell people that. So the neighbors better not be listening to this podcast because <laughs> I do not want to go fix I'm their, sure they <laughs> their <right> washers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Dan Boyack texted me the other day. Do you know anything about appliances? I'm like, I sold that company. Here's their number. Nice. <laughs> I, went, I wouldn't even go over there, man. I was yeah. like, and I was out of town anyway. Thank goodness. Yeah. I was like, just call them. And no, he's, a cool, he's a cool dude. Like I'd do anything yeah. for him if I was around, but yeah. I wasn't around. But I was like, all right, just call them. Yeah, they, yeah. they know what's up. Yeah. And, and I'm sure he was happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they did a good job for him. Yeah. If not, I'll hear back. <laughs> Don't make me get involved again. Yeah, so th th that's actually crazy, man. 17 years of owning that business, huh? 17 years owning it, running it. And and there's a there, when you lose that, it's like a piece of you is gone. So I was yeah. I felt kind of lost for a couple of years because that was such a that was just like yeah. my whole life was that. And I sold it. And I kind of had it like, and that's when that's kind of when I got started getting to know you. Yeah. Cause when you sell a company, it's like the people that have worked there, but been working for me for 15 years, you know, some of them and, and a lot of them for over seven, eight years, and they become all of your friends. Yeah. Well, next thing you know, you're a nobody when you, when you own a company and you're the boss, you're a somebody. And when you sell that and all your friends and people, your people you're hanging out with on a daily basis, going to lunch with and visiting with, they all go with it. And now they don't got as much time to visit you. They're busy at work. Yeah. And I was like, holy cow, it was, it was interesting to see what a big part of me was. I was so invested in that company and to lose that, I, I was like, I gotta, I need a new identity almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you guys came along at the perfect time. Like, Hey, let's go, you know, let's do, let's do poker night. I'm like, yeah. dude, I got friends again. This is cool. <laughs> you know, I don't have to pay them even. That's yeah. even better. Yeah. Yeah. You can just hang out with us. Yeah. Fun. I just hang out. Yeah. I was like, don't have to boss them. I don't have to write them a check. It's like, yeah. huh. So it's, there's something to be said about being friends with your employees. And I was, and the guys I sold it to worked for me and they're still my friends, but they're busy running that company on a daily basis. And I'm busy running my other company. And so you just don't see each other as much. Yeah. And, and I, and there's a big part of you that misses that, you know, yeah. I hope you don't sell your company cause you, cause you'll miss it. There's some things about you'll miss, you know? Yeah. I've sold a few. So do, do, you, exactly do you miss some or just miss the people? No, no, <laughs> I don't miss the company. Even a, I don't miss doing the plant repair at all. I just yeah. miss, I just miss my guys. No, I'm missing the know? people will be for sure. So ADP Lemco, you know, the one, my family's business, you know, like uh -huh. that would be, if I sold that would be, uh, I know exactly what you're saying. You know, yeah. I have really good friends that work there. Mm -hmm. So You'd be like, Oh man, I don't see you guys as much as I want to anymore. Yeah. You know? I'd almost want to just sell it to them. Yeah. And that's what I did. That's exactly. why I sold it to the guys I liked the most, you know? Yeah. You kind of interesting too, right? Cause you almost sell it. You wonder what your value is and they stop talking to you cause they want to do it on their own. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? They're like, and they're, they got something to prove now they can, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's been, it's been almost three years and they're starting to ask me again. They're like, Hey, well, you know, what would you do here? I'm like, Oh, oh you took you three years. And I'm like, I'll tell you exactly what to do there. I've already yeah. fought that battle. You know, 15 <laughs> years ago, we went through that, you know, let me show you how to do that. Yeah. So that was funny a couple of weeks ago that they finally asked me a question, but they're sharp dudes. They're, they're doing a really good job running it. And I'm assuming I'm happy every guy it. that worked for you is like a crazy hard worker like you, right? Uh, no, not well. No? I fired, I fired them all. Oh, I mean, right. I, I mean, I fired stick around though, right? the guys that stuck around are really, really hard workers. Yeah. Cause so you just, just can't have that culture when you're a hard worker. Oh, you just demand it from people. Yeah. And if they can't cut you, they, most of the time they weed themselves out. It's like, you know, this ain't for me. I'm like, yeah, it's not. Yeah. 
I don't even, I just shake them on the hand, say thank you for your time, and I move on. Yeah. I don't make it personal. I don't, I don't try to stop them from leaving. You know, I just, yeah. when it's your time to go, you go. Yeah. And I'll find someone who wants to work hard. But if you're going to be in the trades and you're not working hard, forget about it. You're in the wrong industry. Yeah. But I, I taught my guys something. Uh, I'm teaching plumbers now, which is interesting because I'm self-taught. No one yeah. taught me plumbing, but I'm up there in front of these 10 yeah. guys teaching plumbing. I kind of laugh at myself. They think I, they think I know plumbing. <laughs> I'm like, you guys, you guys should know this better than me. I'm new to this. Yeah. But I was trying to teach him a, a principle. I wish we had a whiteboard here because I think your, I think your kids, if this is who you're showing it to or whoever's watching, will see value in it. But yeah. let's see if we can do this just in our heads. If we can follow the math in our heads and you're way better at math than me. So it'll be easy for you. But <laughs> I was trying to teach my guys uh, how to get ahead because they, they're wondering how to get money to invest. They just asked me this. I said, you know what? I'll do a class on it. Sure. Yeah. I'll do a five minutes on it in one of our meetings. And I said, okay, if you have, if you're making a thousand dollars a paycheck, because a thousand dollars is an easy number to work with, right? Most yeah. people, most people are, a lot of people are making more than that, especially if they're listening to your podcast, you yeah. know, that's nothing <laughs> to them. That's like dinner for them. But, <laughs> but let's say you're making it, let's say you're making a thousand dollars a paycheck. And you're living, it takes you $950 of that just for your living expenses. Because we're all liabilities. We all have to eat. We all have to have somewhere to live yeah. just, to, just to stay alive. And then, so they're investing on a 40-hour work week. They might be investing 50 bucks. Might be able to save $50 to have to invest. Yeah. And I asked them, I said, well, what if you worked twice as hard? What if instead of doing 15 service calls, you do 30? Doesn't matter the time it takes, time and a half, whatever. But I'm talking about piece rate. What if you were to do 30 jobs instead of 15 and you made double the money and all oh, happened to work out that way. And they told me every one of my guys in my class. And I started to question their intelligence after this. And, and, <laughs> and I love them. Like they're sharp plumbers, yeah. but they're not investors. I said, well, how, what would you have? If you work twice as hard. How much more would you have? And everyone in the room tells me the same answer. I said, well, you'd have double the money. You'd have a hundred dollars to invest. And I'm like, guys, this is what's wrong with society. Like, why aren't we teaching this in high school? Yeah. You know, like put me in every high school for five minutes and I'll blow people's minds with this one concept because they just don't understand it. Yeah. And it's so simple. And we did the math on it and that's 20 times in your money, right? Your $1,050 you have to invest by working twice as hard yeah. because your cost of living is still at 950. Yeah. You know, so every little bit extra you do, that's money you actually get to save. And I was trying to teach him. I said, look, I'm not a smart guy. I'm a freaking college dropout, but I've known this, this concept for a long time. That's why I work so hard yeah. because the work you do after 40 hours is worth 20 times the amount of work you do for the first 40 hours. Yeah. And if you do if on that math, that's, I think that's 21 X. It's like, well, how do you 20, how do you 20 X what you're investing? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the secret. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah becoming more efficient. Pass, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. If you, it doesn't matter how many hours is more you have to work. If you can, if you can 20 X your investment money, cause that's the only money you actually ever get to see or keep or do anything with. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. No, I'll tell you, it's so. crazy. I, uh, every time I mentor someone, you know, they want to you know, fix their finances or help them invest or whatever. Right? I always go, okay, 500 bucks a month into the stock market, set up an E-Trade account or whatever, just set up a brokerage account and throw 500 bucks in there. As soon as you do that, I'll help you buy some stock. Nine out of 10 can't do it. They it can't come up with $500. Make, no, they'll make more money. They won't put the money in the account because the second that they get the cash for that, they come up with something. Well, yeah. I bought some stuff for the kids or all oh, this thing came up and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, you know, I just smile and say, oh, well, you know, maybe next month, maybe next month. And eventually it fades, right? Because now they're embarrassed to say they over, give up on over themselves. six months, they can't put 500 bucks in. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, you're never going to be able to invest. You know, like stop spending your money because the principle you're talking about, right? It's those yeah. guys. It's like if, you, mm -hmm. if they work twice as much, that means they can spend twice as much. And it's like, no, you can't. You still live. Got to live on the same yeah, to make you that stay work. In the same budget and invest yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's one of the keys to my success is I've kept the same cost of living for. Well, I mean, with a little bit of an increase, obviously. You know, inflation happens, but like really, it's it's been the same for 15 years. Yeah. Which, as you you know, double and triple and quadruple your income. You know, that leaves you a lot of money. So to much more money to invest if you're living on the same amount. Yeah. And, it, and I was, I was almost surprised, but not, I've done this before in my other meeting, my other company before, and none of those guys came up with the right answer either. Yeah. They just, they just don't see it that way. Yeah. 
And, but if you do see it that way, you can be an average guy like me. You can be a fix it guy like me and, and own commercial real estate. Yeah. If you understand that concept, if you can just invest, save, work harder, because you're not working smarter necessarily. Not everyone's smart, yeah. but you can work, you can work twice as hard and 21 X your investment money. And that's really, that's, that's what I did. So <laughs> no, absolutely. Anyway, yeah. And you've done, you've done well. So next, you know, you got a farm in Mexico and your trees are literally printing presses, yeah. you know? <laughs> so like, yeah. And by the time you're 50, when your body starts breaking down a little bit, you know, that you're, ain't, you're that ain't happening, bro. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. You're, work, you're a freaking animal. But, um, you know, the rest of us, it's like, yeah, I've got, you know, up other supplemental income that's coming in, you know, that you've been really wise with in the pecan farms. I just got to, I got to make that happen. Yeah. We're going to get the you more. We talk about it. The more I'm just like, where do I buy this at? It's just fun. And yeah. it's fun too. It's like yeah. in life, you got to do things that interest you. And yeah. to me, that's interesting too. It's just something so different. Oh yeah. And it's such a cash cow. And I got an in on it. It's like, why wouldn't you do it? You know? No, oh, absolutely. We'll find you one. Oh yeah. I want to <laughs> ride next to yours. Okay. No, we, yeah, we've even talked about buying some of the mature ones, right? Yeah. And they're more expensive. They're a couple million bucks, but still yeah. though, it's like, it's just, but they're, but they're producing instantly. Exactly. You know, exactly. first year they're paying for them, for paying the payment on what you invested with. So yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. We need to pay for that. We need to make that happen. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get, once I'm a citizen, we'll put them in, we'll put them in my name and drop a contract. Yeah. That way no one's messing with you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That'd be cool. No, perfect. And we'll give you a management fee on top of that bad boy or whatever. We'll yeah. That out. Everyone, everyone. I'll, I'll be a, that's be a middleman. I'll still give it right to my brother-in-law Yeah. because I am not a farmer. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, doing the deal, you know, Yeah. you add value, you get paid. That's yeah. how this world works. Yeah. I can bring, I can bring the deals together. And I got another guy over there who was an awesome farmer that wants to do, wants to do one already. He wants to manage one. Oh, so, really? Mm -hmm. Great. So I'm, we'll look for another one. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> we really, really do. Then we'll do tequila. Yeah. I'd yeah. like your all, idea on I'm that, dude. That. So I, dude, right now I'm, I'm negotiating with uh, two distilleries, both in Utah. One, we might, this might be a little premature, but, you know, we're looking to actually purchase one, potentially. You know, we got to. That'd be cool. It's interesting. I'll just put yeah, it that way. Right? Cool. I'll leave it in my name because that, that deal has a high potential of falling through. Yeah. Uh, might not happen. But fingers crossed. You yeah, end up with but, your own distillery. That's pretty yeah. cool. But on Monday, I'm going with these other guys that have a really good distillery. And we're going to try and pen a deal so I can start taking some of their production, keep them keep them working 24-7, see if we can grow them. Mm -hmm. So, but oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Put one over there in Chihuahua, Mexico, or, you know, it's well, way see, cheaper that, to operate, dude. That's what we have to do. Yeah. Because to make tequila, you have to bring it out of Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so, but oh yeah, dude, put a little, get the little donkeys out there. And like <laughs> yeah. Roll the stone over top of all of it, just for the, the, mm. the videos we make. <laughs> yeah. That'd be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the funny thing with Mexico, man. I love Mexico. I mean, it's, I mean, there's some bad parts of Mexico. There's some terrible parts of the United States, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of parts of Mexico that are just beautiful and. And the people know. are cool there. Yeah. You know, the majority of people there are really kind and yeah. and they're hardworking. They're hardworking dudes, the same as you meet over here. The la I, I love the language. I think the language is beautiful. Yeah. You speak a little bit, right? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. And but I I like the sound of it. I like a lot of things about their culture. It feels like going home to me. Like yeah. it's see we're yeah. I'm working on a deal with Real Madrid right now, so some Spaniards are Oh yeah, that'll be fun. And bro, I got you know, I talk through a translator generally, right? Because if we don't speak Spanish, I have to have a translator. And I'm right. just like, man, I've Never wish I spoke Spanish more than right now. I don't know why I don't just learn it. You, you, gotta, you better get on it. better get on it. We'll learn Babel. together. You know what Babel is? I've heard of that. Yeah, it's like a little app, app you know? Yeah. But yeah, I bought the lifetime membership or whatever. We should so. get in a Spanish class together, dude. That'd we should. Funny. What That'd we need funny. to do is learn enough that we could just sit there and freaking eke it out to each other and uh -huh. so that we can kind of like do it. Because I guess I'm probably a little nervous about speaking to a guy that speaks Spanish because I'm just like, I'm like, I just don't even know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know? Like I go to Mexico and they all laugh their A off because they just add A to everything, right? Yeah. And I'm like, hola, car O, you know, like, they're just yeah. like a oh, freaking white guy. Yeah, you know? it's so funny. Yeah, gringo. Car <laughs> <laughs> Where's the hotel O? You know, yeah. all that kind of crap, you know. As long as they find me funny, I do it. When they stop finding me funny, I stop doing well, it. Well, if you could if you could be as good in that language as you are in English, because you've mastered the art of communication in English, you learn Spanish and master that while you're just opens up so many more doors oh yeah because there's there's a probably a lot that gets lost in that translator yeah you know your tone of voice isn't there there's things that that don't come across in a translation yeah that in the same language would well so, it's wild trusting yeah. them too right i mean i trust my translator he's partly a sales guy for me yeah but it's like 
um, when I explain something in English, I know that the tr it has to be translated to Spanish and the words don't always flow exactly. Mm -hmm. So then you got to worry about their understanding of it on their end. And then they ask mm -hmm. questions back and you're like, I don't know if you actually understand what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and it's not that they're not that anyone's not smart along the way, you know, cause sometimes you talk to people just don't get it. Right. Right. I think everyone in that little triangle gets it, except for the fact that we're using words that don't translate well. And I'm uh -huh. like, I don't know if, but could be really slang for one part of Mexico and in, in Spain, yeah. that word doesn't even exist. Right. You know, so right. you're missing some couple little steps there, I bet. But. What's the wife would love it if I just whipped out some Spanish on her? Oh, yeah. Me and Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> She'd probably laugh at you. Oh, she would. She would love it. So, uh, so cool, man. So you've also, so with your, with your company right now, I repair. So did you start out in HVAC and move into plumbing or did you start those both at the same time? I just started HVAC and I, yeah. and I, it's funny because I had my other appliance repair business at the time. And I just, I named it, I repair heating and air because I personally just wanted to do the HVAC Yeah, and it was just for fun. Oh really? You know, it was like just for fun. I can make some extra money, but I just want to learn. I want to learn something new. And I literally just named it that to be a small company. I never, I never wanted to grow it. I never wanted to do anything, yeah. you know, big with it. It was just gonna be a little add on that. I would go run those jobs myself just to learn something new, do yeah. something new. And uh, next thing you know, I sell the other company. And I was like, okay, now I got to build this, you know, now I need <laughs> 10 guys. And, <laughs> and it turns out if you're relying on HVAC for the whole year, that's a pretty bad business because people only need you in the summer and the winter. They don't really need you in the fall or the spring. Yeah. So, well, if I'm going to run this as its own freestanding company, I got to get into plumbing. So I went back, found a guy to be my qualifier and help me, help me with the licensing. And yeah, it's like, I could put a water heater in, you know what I mean? I've been putting water heaters in since I was 10 years old. You know, I can do, yeah. I can fix a pipe. I can braze. I can, it's like, I know how to do all this stuff anyway. Yeah. I just give me my license, you know, yeah, when you go to town. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was an easy, another easy step kind of, you know, for me to want to do that. Yeah. And then plumbing's year round. I mean, yeah. that, that stuff's breaking all the time. So. Yeah. Are sewers, uh, do sewers fit pretty easy with plumbing or are they their own beast? They're kind of their, they're kind of their own beast. I know a lot of plumbers, good plumbers that won't touch underground Yeah. because you got to have the tractors and the, and the know-how and then, you know, when you, when you're excavating and you hit a, a main gas line for the city, that's a pretty bad day. And they, you know, our main power line, you grab your duct tape. yeah, the whole neighbor, <laughs> the whole neighborhood goes dark, you know, you're like, okay, well I did that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm a, that sucks. You know, I was like, what am I doing? Um, so I've had, you know, I've had a couple of oopsies with gas lines, you yeah, know, yeah. I've had my share yeah. and for a lot of plumbers, they just, they just don't want that risk that to them, that would just stress them out to the point where they just can't function. They want to, they want to do what they can see, which is above ground. They know what they're looking at and they're good. Yeah. And they also don't want to, you know, to invest in that. I mean, I probably got three quarters of a million dollars into my excavation equipment and, you know, yeah. a couple of 550 platinum trucks and trailers and backos and you know mini x's and bobcats and and all the stuff and it's like they don't want to put out that much money to go dig a hole in the ground to fix a sewer right. on the plus on my whole lining truck i got an Isuzu that's just just a lining truck yeah. to shoot a liner it's like by the time you do that one plumber they'll work their whole life um you know they'll feel like just paying back their equipment yeah so to them, it doesn't make sense. And so they'll turn to a guy like me and they'll just refer me. Yeah, just go dig that, you know, give me a cut. Yeah. So I got guys referring me now to go dig sewers, which I love because I get to go play in the dirt. I'm like, okay, guys, yeah. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no, the sewers and they're, and they're pretty profitable too, right? Oh, they're pro they're profitable. Yeah. They're they're my highest profit margin. So I don't, my nuts aren't producing yet. So, you know, yeah. sewers, <laughs> is, the nuts come yeah, sewers is where it's at. Yeah. It's like, no, I dropped serious. out of college to dig ditches and I'm, I'm living in your neighborhood. Dude, so I can't I'm telling you though, man, the yeah. trades, I mean, there's, I've had a few tradesmen on, you know, Yellowstone construction was one of the guys that had the podcast. Okay. Right. And, and, um, so they, they do, I mean, they do general construction then they got into excavation big mm -hmm. time now. Right. And then they're, they're getting into trucking and it's like, people are very foolish to think that you can't get into the trades and make really, really good money. Oh, there's a lot because people don't know how to do it and they don't want to do it. Yeah. Like, no, I don't know anybody who wants to fix their sewer that's broken. Right. You're, you're literally 10 feet in the ground with walls that are collapsing. Yeah. I mean, the shoring equipment alone is $15,000 to make sure those walls don't come in on you. Yeah. And that they, they don't want to deal with it. It's not worth the risk. If they tried digging that on their own and it killed them, well, we probably should have hired a 
plumber. You know, right. you should have hired a sewer guy. Yeah. They don't want to touch that stuff because it's dangerous and the know-how of it. And you got to be licensed. The city will come out there. The, oh, se the, true, second huh? you, yeah. the second you call Blue Stakes, Blue Stakes reports to the city, the sewer district or the city, whoever's running it, depending on what area you're in. And they report and say someone someone's having this, you know, mark for a sewer. Mm -hmm. And they'll report back. And if you're not licensed, then yeah, not, you're going to get busted probably. pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that makes sense, too. I mean, you know, our father's time, you know, grandfathers and fathers, right? They're the ones that are just going to go rent a mini. Yeah. Mini they just get in their yard and just tear it up, right? And it's like, yeah. yeah but I mean, the, but really, a lot of those guys got, you know, collapsed on and killed yeah. and maimed and yeah. broken from that. And so they changed it, you know. It's like the fire code. It adapts and adapts because yeah. things are still burning down. They figured out why they're burning down. So right, right. There's some some of that makes sense when yeah. you're doing underground. That's dangerous. So yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, guys like me, right? I mean, not that I'm not capable of doing something like that, but it's just like. But what are you What are you gonna do if you hit the main gas line? You didn't know was there for the city. You know, what's your protocol for that? Yeah, nothing. Freak out. It's freak out. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Call you. Yes, yeah, and I'll be right over. And I'll Look, be close. I am in a lot of trouble. Yeah, please come over here right now. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that you can't dig a hole and fix a pipe necessarily, but there's yeah. a lot of other things in the ground you don't know yeah. about. You know, my how guys. Deep, how deep is the sewer? Most of them right out of the house, come out of the basement. The basement's an eight foot basement. They're right up a foot below that, nine feet. Those yeah. aren't bad. Those are normal. But in Bluffdale, they're all at least fifteen feet. It seems like they're su really they're super deep. deep in Bluffdale. And so you got to have an extend a hoe on your backhoe to reach that yeah. or a full size excavator. So it's, it just depends, you know, where that's you're right. at, but yeah, that's why you hit a gas line every now and again, if you don't blue stake it, right. Cause it's, yeah, well you, we do blue stake it yeah. and they're not where they say they are. Oh know? really? Yeah. But on blue stakes, if that happens. Yeah. You know, Jeez. one one of them, we knew where it was when we hit it. That was just our mistake. And one wasn't marked right. And, uh, but yeah, that's what happens that's when you hit a gas line is just hiss like crazy. Oh man. Spray. Oh yeah. Hisses and sprays and you smell it and oh, gosh. <laughs> it smells like a big, huge fart. Cause they put that stuff in there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like rotten eggs. You're like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I hit some, which is good. Right. Cause if you sparked around that thing, you're blowing up about 10 houses. Right. Uh, yeah. But it depends, you know, if it's, if it's a hot day and it's going straight in the air, you're probably fine. But they, if you hit a main, they will evacuate. They'll, potentially, you know, half the city could have to evacuate because there's certain evacuation laws to Jewish. where if you're within a hundred feet of the person being evacuated, you got to evacuate too. And so it just goes on and on and on and on and on who they have to evacuate by the evacuation yeah. laws. So it's kind of crazy. I never hit, I've never, I've hit one that big, not broke one that big. That's a difference. Oh, you just tapped it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and it was marked wrong. So do you dig real slow just in case of that? Yeah, and the more the more you dig, well, the more you dig, you can kind of feel your controls. Mm -hmm. You feel like something's wrong, and uh, they had, they had marked it wrong, and, and I scooped and kind of stopped. And I backed off, and, and sure enough, it was there. Yeah. We didn't do any damage to it or anything because was go I was going slow, but yeah. depends. And I have a different like my my scoop isn't uh, it's flat, it's flat, uh, so it's forgiving. Yeah, you know, versus something sharp. So there's different pop right into it. Yeah. You don't stab it. So that's kind of, funny. You know, Jeez. it's kind of funny. I know you think about that in construction, man. We've actually had some water pipes before when we dig outdoor backstops, right? Mm -hmm. Is those going to go down like three feet or four feet. Right. And they just run water. Like, you, you put know, the foot in. Down, yeah. You know, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And you know, you hit those things and it's just like, <laughs> like what the flip? Yeah. And, and those aren't labeled most no. of the time. They don't have a tracer wire or something, you know? So yeah. there's, yeah, we have no idea. We're just going down. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, I was like, and no, I, I have to, some of the time they're PVC, you know, mm -hmm. they're not even freaking metal. And so when you hit that, you're just tearing right into well, it. Well, everything now is in poly or is PVC it? underground. Yeah. And they're yeah. in poly that lasts longer than copper. Even. Uh, yeah. So. I guess cause metal corrodes really quick. Mm -hmm. right? Is that the whole thing? Copper that? lasts quite a qu copper lasts a long time. But eventually it does corrode too. Yeah. Galvanize, you know, 50 or 50 years of galvanize. You're going to, it's going to be gone. Yeah. So they're doing poly now. Jeez. Everything breaks down, dude, just like us. Eventually, everything breaks again. <laughs> I, know, I, hate that. I hate that part. So I'll tell you, one of the fun things about you, though, that people, some, I mean, people that know you know, but you're a gym rat. Right? Oh, I got my, I got my own, own gym, gym dude. I, yeah. <laughs> so it's funny. I, I've been, I swear I've been working out for my whole life, but I did, I did stop there and I was in the heat of my business. I kind of stopped working out for like 10 years. I'd play basketball, yeah. you know, once a week, but that was it. And then one of my, uh, one of my friends, 
uh, who was also my employee, like I say, right, got me into doing CrossFit. Yeah. And next thing you know, I have a 24,000 square foot warehouse we're working out of, and we just put our own CrossFit gym back there. And, you know, every week we're buying new equipment. Next thing you know, we got everything. We got yeah. our, and, and he's kind of just trained us. And and so I, when I sold the company and leased the building to all that, I gave I gave a lot of that away to the guys I was working out with, and I bought all new equipment for my detached garage. So I built my own second CrossFit gym, yeah. personalized, because I was tired of driving in the morning. And uh, I just go every morning. Five days a week, and like I was out there today, I brought my make my daughter get up with me now, Ivy, and oh, do you? Nice. Yeah, she's my little workout buddy, and a couple of the neighbors will come over, and the ones that can get up at by six a.m. Yeah, <laughs> is Dan still coming over? Dan came over at, at night for a few times, but I can't get him there in the morning. Yeah, you know, he just he's like, I'm not getting up that early. I'm See, I'm doing seventy five hard right now. That's rough, dude. That's more than just working out. Yeah. That's that's I'm eating. Work out that's, twice, yeah. Oh, twice. Twice a day. One's gonna be outside. That's why you've seen me walking around the neighborhood. Well, you're in the little cul de sac. So you never see me walking around the neighborhood. Yeah, I don't see you. I don't see you walking. You've kind of passed Dan's house, past Tyler's, all the way to the end, past the pond, okay, yeah. all the way out to the street, then back up. You know, mm -hmm. it's actually so you're supposed to work out for 45 minutes twice a day, right? And literally, if I do that walk and just a nice clip, it's like 44 and a half minutes. That's perfect. You know? Yeah. Get all right. Yeah. <laughs> I can call but it. Yeah, but it's. Uh, but see, I just get up in the morning most of the time and just work out my basement because I'm just like, oh, I just got to get this over with before I start thinking about it. You know? Well, by the time you drive to the gym, kind of get ready, you know, if you go to Lifetime, that's a nice gym, but that, yeah. you know, take you 20 minutes to get there and 20 minutes back. Well, that's, that's 40 minutes. If you're going to do an hour workout, most of that time was driving. Yep. And so what I found out is if I, if I just walk out my door, work out really hard for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, shower, I can still be at work by 8.30 before my guys even get there. They get in at 8.30. Yeah. I can beat them to work still and eat breakfast, you know, do all my stuff yeah. and still get there before they show up. And it's like, you know, that's, that's the way to go. That's efficiency. Yeah. You're not going back and forth to yeah. the gym. So no efficiency for sure. Yeah. So, and then I don't miss. Yeah. If I do miss, my daughter makes me run five miles. Does she really? <laughs> so I missed, I missed a day this week. So I was, I was stayed up really, I stayed up to like two in the morning, yeah. uh, watching, uh, I think it was Yellowstone or something. I was watching at like 2am. Yeah. I was like, I'm not getting up at five to work out. And I just slept in and that's the rule. She has to run a mile if she misses. And she's like, well, if I've run a mile, you have to run five miles, dad. Jeez. I'm like, you're a jerk. <laughs> like <laughs> a mile for a mile. Right. Well, yeah. you know, the teenager owned me on that. And I said, okay, if I miss five miles, so yesterday I ran five miles and I'm not a runner, dude. I was just like, Did you run it outside. I ran outside just huffing and puffing. I'm like, okay, I'm not missing anymore. I hate running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's funny. Well, it's funny yeah. at Lake Powell, right? We were doing the push up challenge. I think we made uh -huh. two days on that. And I was just like, bro. Yeah. You don't want to do no more. Like <laughs> I'm on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You went, you went from zero to a hundred. That's a lot. Yeah. I think yeah. we did. I think I actually, honestly, I think I only did like 65. Uh -huh. I think you knocked a hundred out. Then the next day, dude, I was so freaking sore. I was like, all right. I think I made it like 20 or something. No, I don't I get like, sore on a hundred, you know, now I know, dude, dude. I did today. I did a handstand. I think I did like 60 handstand pushups. Like full. And it's like, did yeah. you really? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm not even sore, bro. Yeah. But it's funny what your body can adapt to. If you do it consistently, yeah. you know, consistently yeah. just do some every day and your body just gets used to it. It's kind of crazy. Well, it's good, man. Cause all your kids are into it too, right? Yeah. You just get into it. Jessica is way in, way into working out, but she's a gymnast. So, all right. So she's, a, I think I told you that maybe, but she's a two-time state champion yeah, tumbler and a and a two-time uh, regional champ tumbler. Yeah, because you were traveling to go do a yeah. bunch of stuff. And she took fifth at nationals one year too for for tumbling. Dang. And her best event is trampoline, but she's never placed at nationals for that for whatever for whatever really? reason. Yeah, she was ranked second in the nation and then didn't even place one year. So. She's, she had, she's had her moments. Is she's that your club? Uh huh. Is it like it's not the high school or something, right? No, it's through Wasatch uh, Tumbling, oh, right by my office. Uh huh. Yeah. Literally in your parking lot. I my we live over there. My I got three kids in tumbling right now, so it's like <laughs> I drive past your office all the time. Pick, oh, you tell me when you're over there. I go watch them. What time do they go? Is it like in, in the day or is it at night? It changes all the time. Mostly my wife takes them because I'm at work, but yeah. they they definitely are going at night right now in the summer. Yeah. Uh, after school, they have to go. They only have a certain amount of time after school. Yeah, yeah evenings and nights. Yeah. The summer in the mornings. You know, I'm like, yeah. why it goes at like noon? I'm like, dude, I'm not going. <laughs> I'll never see you. You yeah. know, what I mean, I'm not going to work at twelve for that. Yeah, did Eric can tell you I started the football, the uh -huh. football camp. Uh, she didn't tell. Oh, I was hanging out with her and uh, and Ben's wife, Mandy. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was like the only guy in the neighborhood that was there. So I saw Ben the other day, but I was they roped me into 
to scouting just barely. Oh, ah, there you and go. And I saw Ben over. I didn't say hi, but I'll yeah. say hi to him next time. Yeah, yeah. He was on the sideline. What are you doing for scouting? So they want me to, they want, they're, they're going to try to get me to coach is what they're going to try to do. Uh, but they wanted me to, to look at what kids to pick for the draft, you gotcha. know, for the, for A team versus B team and all that. Which, uh, which class? For scouts. Oh, for scouts. Oh, for, right. for a little while, yeah, little yeah, seven yeah. year old. So, so our, I, so our kids went to their, their first day at pads for Nixon and Wyatt yeah. was the same day, Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. He's Nixon's super stoked. And it's it's weird seeing my son out there. I know you've already been through this, but yeah, you know, but big, little so he's growing up, you know. Well, and he was so amped to play football, and I brought you know, I've to, you know, I played football. Obviously, you played football. I'm right? yeah. both big freaking bros, right? It's easy to play football when you're massive. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I've held him back, right, because he's been so skinny. And, and uh, next, by the time you listen to this, I'm sure he'll be 16 years old and, and big. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I never want him to get hurt, and uh, you know I kind of see him out there. So we, I zed him down. So he's a gremlin. Okay. And uh, so he's kind of with like he's actually with kids of his own size, and it made me really happy. And yeah. So last, so I showed up a little late last night because I wanted to be there every night for for him. You know, mm -hmm. showed up a little late, so I walked out onto the field, and you know, just like slapped him on the helmet and be like, "Hey, your dad's here, bro." Just so you know, and he's all happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's here, that's yeah. cool. And then I was talking to Phil Stevens. Uh -huh. Right. And he's just like, thinking about coaching? I'm just like, oh, hell no. Yeah. You know, and he's like, really? I'm like, bro, I, I don't know if I can handle it. These kids don't know what they're doing. And so he's like, yeah, it's kind of like herding cats, but honestly, dude, it's kind of fun, you know? And he's like, and he goes, uh, I just need someone to coach line and defense. And I'm kind of like, you, you should do to, that, like, dude. Me up, bro? No, like, you should do that. Things I want. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I kind of looked at him and I go, I go, you going to pick my son? Cause he, and he's coaching B2, so it's like the lowest mm -hmm. team. And he goes, yeah, I'm going to try and get all the kids in, in the neighborhood at least that are on that in that age group. And I was yeah. like, all right, you pick Nixon, I'll coach with you. That's he's so like, really? cool. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> and most of it do, too. I mean, I like Phil. He's a, he's a freaking soldier. He's a, yeah, he's dude. a cool guy. But I uh, honestly, I just thought, you know what, dude? I'm just going to – I want to be out here with Nixon, you know? Mm -hmm. And at that age, defensive coordinators can stand out in that field. Yeah. And he, he wants to play defense. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll come out here and stand with you and help you coach. And – I mean, I have the, you know, not that I'm some football savant, but like, you know, seeing these You know kids, how to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. I mean, with the line for sure, you know, I see all these kids putting their hands behind their back and I'm just like, yeah. no, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> hands in front, whole time. Hands do everything. More yeah. important than your freaking feet. Hands. Yeah. You know? Why do they call it football? Everything's with your hands. Throwing, catching, blocking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny. They should have called it handball. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> but no, I'm excited, man. I mean, it's just. Oh, gosh, it's just fun having kids, dude. And you have more kids than I do. You get more joy. Yeah, it's you know? fun. It's funny you say Phil. Phil texted me yesterday and said, hey, Wyatt's uh, Tesla Tesla four-wheeler's at my house. He just left it here. Oh. So it ran out of battery, and he just left it in front of his house and walked home and didn't say a word. Dude. He's like, oh, I'm done with that. Oh, jeez. See, my kids, we didn't <laughs> kids get the Tesla so ones, funny. we got some electric ones. Yeah. And I was like, hey. If you run the battery out and you're a mile away from home, don't come home without this thing. Yeah, push it home. Like push it all the way home. I show I put it neutral. It's three houses down. He just walks away, dude. He's like, yeah, I'm done with that. That's why it is. I love he's that kid. Crazy. Like that. He's got a he's got a, I'm gonna do it my way kind of look to it. Yeah. Oh you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah, but I mean he can do a back flip, he can do a front flip, he can do a full he's seven. Oh, he can ride that four wheeler on two wheels. Six days into owning that from Dan, he's like, Dad, watch this floors it down the driveway and right before he hits the grass he turns and i think he's going to go over yeah. like i think he's going to get yeah, killed that's, that's what it looks like yeah. he goes up on two wheels he just stays there rides two wheels down the whole driveway 100 feet rides the cul-de-sac for two minutes the last minute i record i got a minute long recording of him on two wheels on two wheels yeah this is day six that's we're not insane. this is day six he's on two wheels just yeah. con full control of this machine yeah. i'm like dude you're you're a crazy kid, dude, but hit balance. And it's probably why he's good at wrestling. And I think, well, hopefully he's good at football. But I was going to say, man, when he's when he gets into high school, he's going to be a problem as a wrestler. Yeah, he's already a problem as a wrestler. I'm not, he's good. I would not be surprised if that kid went three years undefeated. Yeah, I mean, he, seriously, right? I mean, it's insane. He's like eight years old, right? We're like yeah, he's, crowned him champion. Yeah, he's a, like, no, he's a stud, though. Dude, oh, yeah, man. He's into it. He gets into whatever. He's just got a look on his face where he just is like, no, I'm going to. You know, yeah. doing it my way, yeah. pointing this thing. You know? Yeah, he I just love it, dude. He finds a way. Yeah, yeah. But that blew my mind. I'm like, how do you know how to ride this on? I've never ridden a four wheel on two wheels in my whole life. I'm way too scared for that. And I'm oh. kind of a crazy guy, whatever you know, yeah. you know, into sports and whatever. And that's just who he is. Yeah. He's just like, 
rides anything with wheels he's rode it he's jumped it he's flipped it he's yeah. tumbled it he's <laughs> <laughs> it's funny no he's an absolute blast man yeah um we digress talking about why for too long dude but i could oh, talk i could talk for hours about him oh no dude, he's <laughs> what, fun, what else do you want to ask about uh business anything no man i mean i mean you get the business i mean i guess i mean with the business side you know i mean it's kind of the theme of the podcast or whatnot but like maybe uh i mean what's your favorite part about owning a business i'll ask you that yeah my favorite part is is i can come do this on a day where i'm busy i can just decide to do something and do it yeah I think people get, they get so caught up on, on working their job. They're like a hamster in the wheel, spinning that wheel. Yeah. And they never stop and look around at what else is out there. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff out there. And you, you can't really stop working for very long. You got to get in there and work hard, but you should, you should look around a little bit at opportunities. You know, yeah. why not look at pecans? You know, why not look at HVAC or plumbing or sewers or, you know, look where the margins are. Don't yeah. get, don't get stuck your whole life in a, dead end job yeah. you know take a chance figure it out even if you lose yeah. get back up well there's one thing about oh. you the people once they get to know you i mean you are a figure it out guy like 100 oh, yeah. right yeah. yeah i mean it's almost like so ingrained in you that you i think you would be shocked yeah. if you well you wouldn't because you've hired people but you know what i mean like you get around other guys that just won't figure stuff out oh yeah i've hired like, guys with i hired guys with mbas that just can't figure stuff out yeah. like how is this possible you know it's like pick up a drill you know yeah measure it drill a hole like do anything you know they just, they just can't do it but even nowadays it's like and they're YouTube smart or... people yeah yeah oh no, youtube's like... just a cheat code yeah you know? i built a house in eagle mountain literally off youtube really? never built a house before in my life i'm not a builder <laughs> i was like i'm gonna build a house in eagle mountain the same thing was, you know it's that like mexico i'm gonna buy a farm but yeah. i built i built a house 5500 square foot home with a gourmet kitchen nicer than my house that i live in really yeah absolutely immaculate yeah. hardwood floor fiber whatever i just, every night i'm on youtube probably drove my wife crazy you know yeah. she watches all these shows i'm like i don't i'm ignoring that i'm just on my phone learning how to put a cabinet in or i'm cutting granite. i did i did a remodel on this on this murray condo and cut all my own granite yeah. you know it's like well, i've never done that before okay i'm just gonna <laughs> how hard could it be give me a diamond blade you know and a, oh, a yeah. skill saw and i'm like all right i gotta file that down sand that down but yeah i i feel like if people put themselves out there they can figure it out yeah. believe in themselves a little bit yeah. i don't need to know every step i need to know the first two steps and sure you get in trouble that way but you know then just figure out step three figure out step four have my have some brother-in-laws not throw them under the bus because i love them they're super smart people but they're engineers mm -hmm. but they won't take on an assignment unless they know step one through a hundred they have to know every step or they won't even start yeah. and they're not good entrepreneurs you know yeah. they just they just don't make good entrepreneurs oh, you can't because be an of entrepreneur that if you have to do that yeah because you don't know you don't know what's coming out you don't know what the market's going to do you don't know if we're in a recession next year yeah there's just so many different liabilities and, and things that can change that that pe some of these really smart engineers just have a hard time with that yeah and so you know you need some reckless people to be entrepreneurs in a way yeah in a sense but. oh absolutely you've got to not be afraid to just sit in the moment and let crap hit you yeah you know and just figure it out just take a hit and figure it out yeah, yeah. so I mean, most of my career has been figuring stuff out too yeah and you're a college grad i mean they don't yeah. get they don't get smarter than you right <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean i'm a college grad but i I give very little credit to my college education. I did pre-law. I did accounting and pre-law. You know, I did enough accounting to be dangerous, but I didn't. Value in a business. I learned how to value businesses and really tear through financials when I started my own hard money brokerage, right? Because yeah. then people would bring deals all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I was taking them to lenders, right? And they'd be like, why should I do this? And it's like, freaking, I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I better figure you out know, the they, why. Like, kick it back to me every time. And I'm like, well, if I don't prep a package for these guys, they're never going to do these deals. Mm -hmm. But if I do prep a really good package, I can get this to four or five lenders, get them to bid on it, and basically increase my one mark, my, my one point to two or three points because I brought mm -hmm. them a really good deal. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just started getting into the you know, nuts and bolts of how to, I mean, I did a lot of YouTube. I read a lot of books. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is, you know, 10, 12 years ago, but, but I think, I think everyone should go to enough college to learn how to read a balance sheet. Like if you don't, if you don't understand yeah. how it can't, the accounting is being done and being put together, yeah, then you can't read it and understand it. And then you can't value a business. So I think you do have to go to, to some college, but I don't know if you got to spend six years there, no. you know, like, 
You know, make like sure I you would. can read a balance sheet, though, and a profit yeah. and loss. And I think so. if you go to college, you know, if you want to go to college and get a degree, I think, you know, that's that's a definitely a good path to go. But I almost think, like, dude, find a mentor that can teach you. Yeah, unless you're going to be a surgeon. You know, you know if you're going to be a surgeon, you go to all the school you can. You know, I don't want yeah. I don't want someone practicing the first time on me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Very but, true. I would agree with you on that. So it depends what they're studying. But for business, just entrepreneur, you know, a service company or something, you know, just, just get like in there, figure it out. Yeah. Degrees or whatever. It's like, what are they teaching you? What classes are you taking? I don't you know. know what I mean? How to be scared shitless and just go <laughs> start something yeah. and just see if you can make it work? Like, how do you teach that? Like I could, know. I could teach you business in one sentence. Okay. Yeah. Buy low, sell high. Right. Okay. Right. That's business. <laughs> like if you, if you can just find a way to do that, you're going to do fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So that's funny. Yeah. Cause everything else breaks off of that. Right. Make sure yeah. you get paid. Mm -hmm. that's a good one. Oh yeah. Make sure you get paid. <laughs> what I do is I make people pay before I do the work. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, not or every, not every client is for me either. Like I miss out on a lot of deals yeah. that way, but I, I don't wait for my money ever. Yeah. I'm a COD business. I don't bill. Yeah. So no, that's the only way to fly. Yeah. So I'm not at all my. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're waiting for it. Well, a lot of them government contracts, right? So you have to play the pay application game and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, in the wood floor business, let's not get started. Though. Yeah. But I, so. I'm just a service business. So it's kind of simple. I'm yeah. like, if you want it, if you pay. If you're not, I'll move on. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to wait for my money. Oh, yeah. No, I'm super so. jealous of companies that are also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I mean, if I could turn my receivables into cash in one fell swoop, I would have a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but at the same time, it's deals because a lot of people need to pay, you know, have time to pay. So yeah. it's like. Depends how, depends how you structure it. Right? You're yeah. You're going to finance here in the middle of you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we need. Absolutely. So, my friend, it comes to the time, man. I want your best two minutes of advice. Uh, don't be scared. Don't be scared to work hard on anyone else. That's, that's kind of cliche, but, but, uh, just remember, remember the, how to 21 X your money and that and invest it. Don't spend it, just invest it and save it and invest it, save it, invest it. And, and you'll be surprised what you can do with that. And, uh, talk to people who understand money because 95% of you people listening to this don't understand how it works. And there's 5% of people out there that are really good at it. The same way you go to a doctor to get help when you're sick, go to someone who understands how to make money to help you invest your money and, and then just learn from them at least have them show you how to do it. You can still do it. You're on yourself once you know, but do it by yourself. But yeah, if, if you're going to, if you're going to work hard, you might as well get ahead because the re end of the day, everyone's working hard and uh, they have not, a lot of people have nothing to show for it. So that's, uh, that's what I did. I, you know, a dropout college dropout that, you know, I own nine, I own nine properties, you know, that are paid off and in, in America and a freaking hundred acre farm in Mexico. It's like, you know, how did a repair man that, that fixes washers and dryers do that? And my IQ is pretty, pretty low, you know, but I just, I just <laughs> learned, I could, true, yeah, way, yeah. My, <laughs> I just learned at a very early age, uh, the difference, you know, how to, how to make that much money work for you. Yeah. And they either, they say you either understand interest or you pay it. Right. right? So, yeah. So, I've had it said, uh, there's two types of people in this world, those who make interest and those who pay it. Yeah. Yeah. So just decide which one, you know, which person you are, both are good. Both yeah. are needed. Yeah, you're, if you're the kind that pays it, thank I, you. Still, I still want to know yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, thank you very much, Luke. Thanks for coming on the on my yeah, podcast. I appreciate it. You know, you know, one of my good friends coming on always makes me happy, and you know, I know, I know this will be this will be good. Well, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the President McCormack Podcast, brought to you by McCormack Foundation, Saxton Fund, ADP Lemco, and Professional Floor Systems. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and keep up with Mark on Instagram at President McCormack.